بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ویلکم ٹو لیکچر نمبر نائن آف ایریگیشن انجینئرنگ ان پریویس لیکچر نمبر ایٹ وی ہیو ڈسکسڈ ڈفرینٹ ہائیڈرالک اسٹرکچرس لائک ڈائیورجن اسٹرکچرس کراس ڈرینیج ورکس فلو کنٹرول اسٹرکچر اسٹوریج اسٹرکچر فلو مجرنگ اسٹرکچر کنوینس اسٹرکچر انرجی ڈسیپیٹر اینڈ ڈفرینٹ شور پروٹیکشن اسٹرکچر اوکے آلسو وی ہیو ڈسکس دی ہیڈ ورکس سو اینی اسٹرکچر اینی ہائیڈرالک اسٹرکچر وچ از کنسٹرکٹیڈ ایٹ دی ہیڈ اور آپ ٹیکنگ پوائنٹ آف این ایریگیشن کے نال از کال دی ہیڈ ورک اوکے بیسیکلی اٹ ریزز دی واٹر لیول ان دی ریور سی ایف وی ہیو اے نیچرل ریور ایف وی ہیو اے نیچرل اسٹریم اینڈ فار ایگزامپل ایٹ دس پوائنٹ وی ہیو ٹو ٹیک آؤٹ این ایریگیشن کے نال سو دین ہیئر وی ول ہیو ٹو کنسٹرکٹ سم بیریئر ہیئر وی ول ہیو ٹو کنسٹرکٹ سم سم ورکس سو دیٹ دی واٹر لیول ایٹ دی اپ اسٹریم سائڈ مے بی ریزڈ اوکے ٹو ریگولیٹ دی واٹر این ٹو دی ایریگیشن کے نال ٹو کنٹرول دی اینٹری اپ سیلٹ این ٹو دی ایریگیشن کے نال to provide some some storage for the shorter period to reduce the fluctuation in the level of supply in the river okay so that is called the uh, head works and as we have discussed that uh, see uh, as we know that the river discharge is never constant and uh, and regular okay mean the river discharge is never constant and regular there there is irregularity there the discharge is non uniform throughout the year so obviously when a permanent canal system is taken up from the river so some works are to be provided at the off taken point okay to take care of irregularities in river from condition so since these works are constructed at the point of uh off take that is at the head of the canal system they are termed as the canal head works okay the main object of the canal head work is to divert the water to divert the water from the river end to the canal so that's why these head works are sometimes also called the diversion head works so to achieve the main object of the water diversion from the river end to the canal successfully and efficiently here an obstruction will be constructed across the river okay and that obstruction will do what that will divert the water into the canal that will raise the water level at the upstream side that will reduce the fluctuation that will uh, prevent the entry of sediments okay and also here at the head here at the starting point of the canal some regulatory structure is constructed okay at the up taken point so it gives the proper control over the supply of water into the canal okay and again it is uh, and that regulator structure is preventing the flood water preventing the sediments and preventing the predetermined discharge uh, it is allowing the predetermined discharge into the canal okay and it is preventing the excessive silt entry into the canal so that is why that is the importance yeah, that is the purpose of these uh, head works or these barrier which is constructed across the river so as we have discussed in the previous class that we have two types of head works one is the storage head works and second one is the diversion head works see when the uh, river flow is completely stopped yeah when the water is completely stopped in the river then it is called the storage head works and its example are dams okay when the dams are constructed these are they are completely stopping the flow of water and the diversion head work they are just raising the water level at the upstream side up to some limit okay and due to that raise up water level the water is diverted into the irrigation canal and the remaining water is flowing to the downstream portion or to the downstream area of the river okay so that are called the diversion head works then we know that diversion head works are of two types either it will be the temporary diversion head works or that will be the permanent diversion head works see when the river flow is highly irregular if there is high chances of the flood occurrence then there is no need of the construction of the permanent structures because the flood will damage the structure and it will a type of loss okay so in that case we are just constructing the temporary structure if that is damaged by the flood water then it can be easily reconstructed okay 
and the permanent structure is constructed uh, mostly in uniform and regular uh, river then you know that permanent structure we have uh, weir and the second one we have the uh, barrage okay so again the weir is then divided into two types either it will be the gravity weir and uh, either it will be the non gravity weir we have discussed in the previous class in detail the different types of the uh, weirs okay the gravity weirs are, are then furtherly divided into uh, vertical drop weir or the sloping uh, sloping weir or uh, it will be the parabolic weir okay now in this lecture uh, we will discuss the barrage okay the different components and the different parts of the barrage so again that is a type of the uh, divergent headworks okay so we will discuss the different parts or the different components of the uh, barrage and then also uh, we will have the selection of their site and layout the most importantly uh, being an engineer we must know that uh, which site will be best suitable for the construction of any headworks okay how the site will be selected how the position of the uh, canal uptaken will be selected okay so there are different consideration yeah, there, there are different parameters we will discuss that one and also we have the different components yeah, we have the different structures uh, which are the secondary structure or supplementary structures which are used to be constructed with the uh, headwork so that the headworks may work effectively and efficiently okay for example if here you are constructing the barrier if you are constructing the main structure so we will have to uh, properly strengthen these uh, we can say that these banks here we will have the divide wall we will have the fish ladder we will have the regulators so these are the different secondary structures so we will discuss different secondary structures okay and then also we have some uh, other uh, topics about the irrigation works which we have also discussed in the previous lecture number eight okay that is about the introduction to the canals and the regulators the falls the canal outlets the cross drainage works its types and function so we will discuss these things in this uh, lecture number nine okay so let's come into the uh, first topic that is the uh, barrage so i hope that uh, the difference between the barrage and weir may be clear to you people that see for example if we have a river a natural stream so if an obstruction is constructed from the bed of the river if a barrier is constructed so the water level at the upstream side will be raised up to some limit and the extra water will be overflowing on that obstruction or the extra water will be overflowing on that barrier so that is called the weir okay and see if a barrier is constructed in form of gates so that the gates are operated and due to the opening and closing of that gates the water level at the upstream side is controlled okay then it is called the barrage remember the the main purpose the main function the main objective of barrage weir and dams are same we have just to store the water we have just to create some pond at the upstream side we have just to raise the water level at the upstream side and due to that raised water level it will be diverted into the irrigation canal that is the main function of all the headwaters either it is dam or weir or barrage okay but we have only the constructional difference we have only the structural difference okay so see uh, barrage is a, a type of low head diversion dam remember see if in a river we construct a permanently complete uh, obstruction a complete barrier which completely stop the flow of the water so then the water will be stored for long time and its level will be also raised up to some maximum limit so then it is called the high head divergent headworks and see here that, that is an example of weir you can see that a barrier is constructed from the uh, bed of the river okay the water level at this upstream side is raised and the extra water is overflowing on that barrier so that is an example of weir so see the water level is raised up to some this limit that is a low head raising up water here also you can see that these are see these are the number of gates which are constructed across the river the water is flowing under these gates and due to the opening and closing of these gates the water level at the upstream side will be controlled or some water will be that the water level will be raised at the upstream side okay so uh, weir and barrage these are the low head divergent dam 
Okay, so Beraj is a low head divergent dam which consists of a number of large gates and these gates can be opened or closed to control the amount of water passing through. If, if, if you are, uh, if you are uh, opening completely these gates, so all water will be passed into the downstream area and there will be no storage and there will be no, uh, we can say there will be no uh, uh, um, uh, head rising at the upstream side. And for example, if you are closing the gates, so the water will be stored at the upstream side and the water level will be raised okay so this allow the structure to regulate and stabilize river water elevation upstream for use of irrigation purposes so when the water is stored at the upstream side when the water level is raised at the upstream side then that water will be then that water can be uh, diverted for the irrigation or any other purposes okay and that is the main difference between the weir and barrage that the flow in barrage is regulated by gates okay and in where it is by the crest height see here we have the uh, mean that barrier the highest point yeah that uh, point on which the water is overflowing that is called the crest okay so the water level in the weir are depend on the uh, we can say that the the water level at the upstream side of the weir is depend on the elevation of the crest if the elevation of the crest is more then the water level at the upstream side will be more okay but in barrages uh, it is only depend on the closing and opening of gates okay now see uh, this is the side view of the barrage uh, the main uh, purpose of this topic is just uh, to know about the various components of the barrage so that is the side view see for example uh, if that is the natural stream or a natural river and here suppose you have to take out an irrigation canal so then obviously here we have to construct a barrier okay so up now for example if we are constructing a barrage so that is the main portion where the gates will be operated that is the central point that is the central position here the gates will be closed and open now see to provide stability to provide more protection we will start some construction from this point here we will have some structures then here we will have some structure here we will have some foundations so that is called the upstream side and below these gates here we will have some structures because when the water is under flowing these gates so it will have high kinetic energy there will be the possibility of creation of the hydraulic jump so to 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 protect the main structure from that energies from that extra energies from that extra pressures from that extra effect of the hydraulic jumps here we will have to do some construction so that is called the downstream construction that is called the uh, upstream construction okay so just uh, uh, understand the different components of the barrage so now see from this upstream cutoff wall to the downstream cutoff wall this is called the main portion of barrage this is the main portion and you can see that it is constructed from the reinforced cement concrete that is completely the impervious portion okay that is constructed from the reinforced concrete so that the structure may be more stable and more compacted okay so that is called the main portion from the upstream cutoff wall to the downstream cutoff wall now from the upstream cutoff wall to the upstream tow wall that is called the upstream portion from the downstream tow wall to the downstream cutoff wall that is called the downstream portion and from the upstream tow wall to the downstream tow wall that is called the intermediate portion okay see we have the main portion of the barrage from the upstream cutoff wall to the downstream cutoff wall that is called the main portion and this main portion is constructed from the reinforced cement concrete then the main portion is divided into three parts the upper portion the lower portion yeah the upstream portion the downstream portion and the intermediate portion okay now uh, again see for example that is the river here you have to take out an irrigation canal okay so here you will have the main barrage portion the main central portion where the gates will be operated but you will have to start somewhere here see here you will have to construct the upstream launching apron what is the upstream launching apron it is nothing it is just it is just a layer of stones okay here you will have just to construct a layer of stone or layer of rocks because when the water is flowing towards the structure so it will have some velocity there will be possibility of the erosion so when when you are not constructing these things so the erosion will be start from this point it, it will move towards progressively it will move towards the main structure and then the main structure will be eroded or it will be collapsed 
okay so to protect to protect the main portion of the barrage from the erosive forces here we are constructing that upstream launching apron that is protecting the barrage from the erosive forces and its length will be depend on the discharge of water and it will depend on the length of the barrage okay mean the length and thickness of this uh, launching apron is depend on the uh, discharge in the river and that is depend on the uh, we can say that the length of the main portion the along the cross section okay and again it will strong enough to withstand with the downward water pressure because here some water will be stored and it will exert some downward pressure so this launching apron will be strong enough to withstand with the downward pressure of the standing water and also it will strong enough to prevent the leakage of water into the soil to prevent the seepage of water into the soil okay so this launching apron is actually protecting the main portion from the uh, erosive forces okay and it will be strong enough to withstand with the downward water pressure and it will be strong enough to prevent the leakage or seepage of water into the subsoil uh, then we have uh, another protection which is called the upstream block protection here we will have first we will have a bed of fine material then we will have another bed of the coarser material here you can see that a bed of fine material and then we have a bed of the coarser material that is called the upstream block protection again the upstream block protection uh, that is at the upstream pace of the barrage okay and again that is protected against the wave erosion because when the water is moving towards the structure so uh, there will be the effect of the waves on the structure so to 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 counter attack that wave erosion factors to counter attack that uh, wave action of the water uh, here we are constructing the block protection and again it will be strong enough to withstand with the downward water pressure and it will be strong enough to prevent the seepage or leakage of water into the uh, subsoil okay then we have the uh, then we have the start of the main portion so here we have the upstream uh, impervious floor here we have the upstream uh, concrete floor that is constructed from the reinforced uh, cement concrete okay so why that is impervious floor see when here we have the standing water so it will try to enter into the soil so when the water is entering here so it may cause the uh, collapsing or damage of the main structure so when we have here when we have the impervious floor then the path of that seepage will be increased then the water will seep in this path okay so when its path is increased then its effect will be reduced okay so this um, impervious uh, uh, floor your uh, upstream concrete floor that is lengthening the path of the sewage and protecting the middle portion from uh, of the gates mean to provide the protection to this middle portion where the gates are operated and also uh, it is protecting the scoring of this middle portion okay then we have the upstream glacy okay see uh, and here uh, at the downs uh, at the upstream impervious floor here we have two foundations one is called the upstream cutoff wall and second one is called the upstream toe wall okay here we have a types of two uh, foundation walls so the upstream cutoff wall that is located at the upstream point of the upstream concrete floor and that is actually protecting the barrage from scouring and also that is uh, reducing the effect of the uplift pressure see when the water is seeped here when the water is entered into the uh, subsoil then it will exert some uplift pressure so these cut off walls are uh, reducing the uplift pressure uh, in the barrage floor okay and this upstream toe wall that is uh, situated at the end of the upstream impervious floor okay and it is a type of second line of defense okay in case of upstream cutoff wall collapse then this will give uh, protection to the main structure of the barrage and also uh, it helps to lengthen the seepage path and reduce the uplift pressure okay then we have some uh, then we have the upstream glacier that is a type of slopey bank which is joining the uh, upstream impervious floor into the crest okay crest at, crest is that level or that portion where the gates are operated where the gates are uh, opened or closed where the gates uh, 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 where the gates rests okay the weir surface at the required height above the floor see which the gates rest uh, in their closed position when the gates is completely closed so it will be uh, rest on that crest 
okay and these are the gates yeah, these are called the shutters these are called the uh, shutters and actually they are responsible to keep the water level you yeah, have to raise the water level at the upstream side and to store the water level to maintain the pond level at the upstream side and here we will have some support uh, components like cable and rulers for the uh, operation of that uh, gates or shutter they are maintaining the pond level to raise the water level during low supplies and remember the gates will be completely opened during the floods okay and that is the upstream glaciers which is joining the uh, downstream part of the upstream floor into the crest then we have the downstream glaciers that is uh, uh, mean the downstream glaciers is joining the crest level into the downstream floor level that is joining the crest level into the downstream bed level of the river again that is a type of the uh, downstream glaciers a type of slopey bank okay and then we have the uh, downstream impervious floor again its function is similar to that of the uh, upstream impervious floor okay again it is uh, we can say that built up concrete and is constructed so as to contain the uh, hydraulic jump yeah uh, this it takes care of the turbulences okay mean to uh, again to protect the downstream portion of the uh, barrage from the scouring and from the erosion okay and again here we have the two walls uh, downstream two wall and the uh, downstream cutoff wall again their function are same similar to that of the upstream cutoff wall and uh, upstream two wall okay see the downstream cutoff wall that is these are placed at the uh, end of the downstream impervious floor and their main function is to uh, we can say that uh, to to control the uh, scouring of the downstream portion okay and the downstream two wall again that is a type of second line of defense for the downstream cutoff wall uh, in case if the downstream cutoff wall collapses then this will give protection to the main structure of the barrage at the downstream area okay and also these are uh, providing the stability against the uplift pressure see here when the water is entered or when the water is seeped into the soil then it will try to come out at this downstream area okay so it will exert some uplift pressure so that uplift pressure is counter attacked yeah, that is its effect is reduced by these foundation walls okay and here you can see that the impact blocks see these impact blocks are responsible to destroy the energy because when water is flowing downstream so it will have high kinetic energy or their hydraulic jump may be created so to to reduce yeah to dissipate that energy these impact blocks are constructed okay then here you can see that the inverted filter most importantly the inverted filter as we have discussed in previous lecture that uh, piping is one of the pillar piping is one of the pillar of the weir okay what is actually what is the piping so piping is actually when the water is seep or when the water is entered into the ground so it will try to come out at the downstream area so there may be possibility that some sand particle or some clay particle or some sand particle may come out with that raised uh, raising water so remember when one particle is come out then another particle will try to come out then next particle will try to come out and a type of underground channel will be made a type of underground conduit will be made that is called what that is called the piping okay and when piping is occurred below the structure then there is possibility that the complete structure may be collapsed okay so see the water will try to come out here so here we will have to provide a type of filter okay here we will have to uh, provide a type of filter that is called the inverted filter so when the water is coming out here so the sand particle or the salt particle or the sediment particle will be blocked and it will be uh, prevented uh, to come out into the uh, in this area okay so the piping action will be reduced so that is called the uh, we can say that that is called the inverted filter okay I mean uh, again that is nothing just we have a layer of the fine material then we have a layer of the coarse material then we have a layer of the stone or we have a layer of the uh, rocks and that is actually uh, checking the escape of fine soil particle in the seepage water okay its concept was uh, invented by tarzavi to prevent dams from failing by water piping through the foundation okay so it will prevent the escape of the sediments uh, from under the structures and again here then we will have the downstream block protection similar to the upstream block protection 
okay the downstream the downstream base of the barrage is commonly protected uh, again from the uh, wave erosion by placing uh, these uh, layer of stones or layer of uh, bedding or filter material and we have the downstream launching apron similar to the upstream launching apron again that is placed at the downstream portion of the barrage and again these are the layers of the uh, large uh, stones okay so that it large stone so that they may they may not they may not washed out with the flowing water okay these will be a type of larger stones or larger uh, rocks type material okay and uh, again uh, uh, they protecting uh, we can say that the downstream portion from the erosive forces so these are the main components the upstream launching apron upstream block protection upstream impervious floor upstream glacier then we have the crest then the downstream glacier then the impervious floor down Downstream, then the impact blocks, the inverted filter. Okay, so these things will be constructed. And see, the main thing is here: the gates, which is controlling the water level. These are the uh, downstream and upstream component, which is providing more stability to the main portion of the barrage. And remember, uh, these upstream cutoff wall, upstream tow wall, downstream tow wall, and downstream cutoff wall. These are called sheet piles. Then the upstream cutoff wall is called the upstream sheet pile. The downstream cutoff wall is called downstream sheet pile. And these two downstream tow wall and upstream tow wall, these are called the intermediate sheet pile. Okay? These are called the intermediate sheet pile. Now, uh, as we have discussed uh, already, uh, all components we have discussed, see, that is the main barrage portion. Okay, the main barrage portion that is made from the RCC slabs. Okay, uh, and it consists of here you can see that the um, uh, upstream impervious floor, upstream glacier crest, downstream impervious floor, uh, sorry, downstream glacier and impact blocks and downstream uh, impervious floor. These five portion. This is called the main barrage portion. And then from the upstream cutoff wall to the upstream tow wall, that is called the upstream portion. From the downstream tow wall to the downstream cutoff wall, that is called the downstream portion, and this is called the intermediate portion. Okay, so the main portion is consists of the upstream floor, crest, upstream glacier, downstream glacier, and uh, downstream floor, as we have discussed. Okay. Here you can see that that is the crest on which the gates are uh, the gates rest. Okay, this is the downstream glacier. So you can see that the water is discharged into the downstream area with high velocity. It will have high kinetic energy. There may be also possibility that the hydraulic jump may be generated uh, at the downstream area. So its effect will be reduced by constructing these impact blocks. It will provide more traction to dissipate the uh, energy at the downstream portion. Okay. Uh, that is the crest uh, impervious floor these are the main barrage portion and as we have discussed that the impervious floor are responsible uh, that serve as a inverted filter that particle will not enter at the upstream side and downstream side due to the uplift pressure of the water okay and also uh, these are responsible to protect the medium yeah, intermediate portion from the uh, erosion okay and also they are constructed from the RCC so they can withstand with the high uh, velocities okay uh, an inverted filter as we have discussed that here we have to construct the inverted filter to check the escape of the uh, particle to check the escape of the particle with the uh, seepage water okay and again they are just the uh, first we have a layer of the fine particle then we have the coarse particle so when the water is entered at the upstream side it will try to move and uh, come out at the downstream portion so there may be possibility that some sediment particles may be come out so their sediment particle may be blocked or escaped at this point so the piping action will be reduced okay uh, sheet piles as we have discussed that these upstream cutoff wall, upstream tow wall, downstream tow wall, downstream cutoff wall these are called the sheet piles. This is called the upstream sheet file okay and then we have the downstream sheet piles and then we have the downstream uh, sheet file, intermediate sheet file and downstream sheet file okay these are just the foundation walls uh, which are providing the stability to the main structure okay the upstream sheet file yeah, the upstream cutoff wall is located at the upstream end of the upstream concrete floor okay and uh, as we have discussed that they are protecting the structure from the scouring and they are uh, reducing the effect of the uplift pressure then we have the intermediate sheet file 
I mean the upstream toe wall and the downstream toe wall these are type of second line of defense for the upstream cutoff wall and downstream cutoff wall in case of these two collapse then the toe walls will be uh, providing protection and then we have the downstream sheet file okay again that is at the end of the downstream concrete floor okay and we have the shutters which are uh, maintaining the pond level raising the water level okay mean the shutters are gates which are mainly responsible for raising the water level at the upstream side okay and remember uh, during the floods see also we have discussed that there are there are also we have shutters or gates uh, installed in the weir so in the heavy floods the shutters are lowered in case of weir and in case of uh, barrage the shutters will be raised okay mean the shutter will be opened this is the main difference uh, between barrage and weir. Here you can see that uh, a barrier is constructed from the bed of the uh, river and the extra the water level at the upstream side is raised and the extra water is overflowing on that barrier. Okay, so that is weir. And here you can see that gates are installed. Okay, these are the piers or these are the supporting columns for the gates. And so you can see that the water level at the upstream side or the pond level at the upstream side is controlled by the opening and closing of these gates. The extra water is moving to the down side uh, below the gates. Here you can see that the, 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 these are the glaciers. Okay, so when the water is moving downstream, so there may be the possibility of the generation of the hydraulic jump. Yeah, it will have the high hydro, high kinetic energy. So here we are uh, constructing the impact blocks to dissipate that energy. Okay, and uh, you can see the comparison between the barrage and weir. Yeah, simply we can also say that barrage is the advanced form of the weir. Okay, see weir is uh, cheaper because of simple construction. See only we have a river and here we are just constructing a barrier okay the height of that barrier will be depend on the required water level that how much you have to raise the water level so that will the, the, that that will be the height of the weir and that is called the crest level okay so it is just uh, a barrier which is only constructed no other supplementary and some extra structures are required so that is cheaper and its construction is also simple okay and uh, in case of barrage, uh, we have to see here you can see that we have to construct these piers and we have to design these gates and then the gates will be operated by cables and rulers. So its construction is complex, yeah, its construction is complicated and its cost is also more. Okay, A weir has a high crest level and barrage has low crest level. See the water level in the weir is maintained or controlled yeah, the, is depend on the elevation of the crest. If the crest level is more then more water will be uh, stored yeah, the water level will be more water level will be raised. And remember in barrage only the crests are only constructed just for the support of the gates that the gates will be rest on the crest during the closed position. So the elevation of the crest, yeah, the crest level of the barrage is lower than the crest level of the weir. Okay, it provides more efflux and it provides less efflux. See, see if we have a river and here, for example, you have constructed a weir, then the water level will be raised up to this limit. Okay, when the weir or when a barrage obstruct the flow of water in the river, then the water heads up. Okay, for example, if we construct this barrier, if we construct this obstruction, so uh, obviously the water level will be raised at the upstream side. Okay, now see, and the extra water are uh, flowing over that obstruction. Okay, so see that is the water level which is raised. Yeah, we can say that the 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 uh, the water heads off up to this point in normal condition, and remember when flood occurred, then this water level is heads up up to some maximum limit. Mean then the water heads up up to this point. Okay, so the amount by which the water level rises above the normal level, that is called the efflux. Okay, when we remember when we obstruct the flow of water, then the water will heads off on the upstream side and in normal condition it will move in this level. For example, when flood is occurring, then the water heads will off up to the maximum limit. So the amount by which the water level rises above the normal level is called, is called the efflux. 
similarly in case of barrage for example if that is the crest here we have the shutters okay here we have the gates so the water will be underploving these gates so that is the normal uh, head through which the water is underploving now as we know that when the flood is occurring then we are uh, opening the gates so then more water will be moving downstream and this head will be raised from its normal level so that is called the efflux so the efflux which is occurred in the weir that is more than the efflux from the barrage okay and also uh, in weir we have no control on all over the river because only the water level is raised up to this limit and the extra water is overflowing and in barrage we have the complete and effective control on the uh, water mean, mean if you are in, uh, how much you are interested to raise the water level then it will be maintained by just closing and opening the gates okay so in barrage we have effective control and also uh, in weir there is more possibility of siltation see as we have discussed that if we just construct a barrier then the water level will be raised and the extra water will be overflowing on that barrier so here we will have the standing water so the sediments will be uh, there will be more possibility of the siltation or sedimentation of the particle or depos deposition of the particle okay and in case of barrage here you can see that if the water level is raised but still the water flowing to the downstream is at the bed of the canal it is at lower elevation mean here we will have no standing water so the sediments will come out the sediments will go to the downstream area so there is less possibility of siltation or sedimentation okay and here uh, in barrage we have some supporting columns here you can see that we have some supporting columns or some supporting uh, you, you can see that these supports so here we can construct a, bay, uh, a pathway a walkway even a railway or road will be constructed okay and in case of uh, we are sometime uh, this is a special case in where we, we, we did not have these things so <coughs> we cannot construct a uh, bridge on the weir and the bridge for transportation in barrage can be constructed okay and see also we have discussed that uh, sometime we are installing uh, shutters on the uh, crest in weir okay and for example if you are interested to raise the water level uh, beyond up to some limit then we are installing the shutters in the uh, uh, weir okay so its operation is difficult okay it's raising and lowering is difficult because the water is overflowing on this on the and that shutters and in case of barrage the water is underflowing the shutter so the gates are easily uh, we can say that operatable okay convenient to operate so that is the comparison between the barrage and the uh, weir as we have discussed and here you can see that that is the structural or uh, diagrammatical difference okay only the main difference is here the crest level is more the shutters may be there or not and here the crest uh, the the gates are responsible for maintaining the pond level or the water level at the upstream side see here the water level will be raised up to this limit if you if you don't if you do not install the crest or shutter if the shutters are installed then the water will be raised up to this limit and extra water will be overflowing and in case of barrage the water level will be controlled by closing and opening up gates and extra water will be underflowing these gates okay so that is the main difference between uh, the weir and the uh, barrage okay the rest of the components the upstream launching apron block protection cut off wall tow wall upstream impervious floor downstream impervious floor these inverted filter the rest of all these things are same okay the only the main difference is at this central point okay